buongiorno, buonasera, buonanotte. Ed eccoci qui in questa calda giornata di sole di luglio in cui io ho avuto questa grande idea di unire insieme tutte le interviste che ho fatto a Londra, le quali si svelano tutte le possibilità di scoprire che cosa veramente il pubblico pensa di vari argomenti e idee. Per cui diciamo che è molto interessante questa retrospettiva nel guardare tutto quello che è successo, cioè, ho fatto un cazzo di montaggio insieme a tutte le interviste che ho fatto. Quattro interviste, facciamo, diciamo, rifacciamo tutto da capo. Salve ragazzi, l'integrale! Um, well, communication's getting better. Communication's getting better all the time. You have Facebook, you have Twitter. Yeah. Um, but like, people don't know how to interact. Um, like, you go into a pub, you have a group of people, and you have another group of people. They don't interact. Before, they used to. That, that's the problem. You need to socialize with everybody, not just your group. Okay, so I go out, I have three bits. By the time I get home, she already knows I had three bits. So I'm in trouble. Like, I'm, I'm a naughty boy. Yeah. I like my drink, I like to play, I like to, you know, be out late. Um, she got my attention like this. You know, playing the cheeky chappy. So you gave her the beer free or...? No, 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 no never free. Never, never free. free, never. Never free. <laughs> it, 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 I tried. Yeah. I tried. She appreciated it. Catch you in a bit, bro. Okay, let's rock and roll. Yeah. So what day is it today? Uh, today's Friday. Friday... Friday... 6th. 6th, yeah, Friday 6th. It's June. Sunny weather today, which is nice. Yeah, we wasn't so busy for lunch, but... Still going all right today. What do you think it is, this? That... Yeah. It's a statue. Statue? Yeah, it must be a statue. Yeah. Can you remove the rack, please? Oh, wow. Uh -huh. It's a cat. Oh. It looks like a cat to me, anyway. Yeah, I wanted to do a kangaroo. Oh, a kangaroo. Oh, yeah, the baby's in the pouch, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It looks all right. Yeah. A little bit rough around the edges, but... Yeah, is it your first time trying? Oh, no, no, not at all, but the problem is um, just a project for my my, uh, my course of sculpture. Okay. And I decided to do a comparison. I, I did another one, but from a picture, and this is from... From? Not from memory, but it's from, uh, how do you call it? A picture. A picture. Yeah, a picture from, of um, cartoon. Oh, okay. So it's the the first one from a real picture, and, and the second is from a cartoon. So okay. Different point of view. Okay, cool. Yeah. But we had to put the sculpture inside. Yeah. yeah. So the, the topic of today is what do you think about the relationship between audience and artists without the museum context. Okay, so so not, not museums? Not museums. Okay, well, um, okay, best example that I can think of off the top of my head is um, Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl. Uh, you can go on the internet, go on YouTube and check this out. But, um, like, he watches the crowd mm -hmm. as he's playing a gig. He's watching yeah. the crowd a lot. And um, there was this one gig in America, and he stops the band from playing, mm -hmm. stops the band, tells this person to yeah. stop fighting and to get out, yeah. which, which was amazing. Yeah, yeah so he, um, he looks after the fans. In metal, metal music, um, like, although it's very, very 
Well, some people would call it violent, yeah. like mosh pits and things like that. But if you fall over, mm -hmm. somebody's picking you up straight away. So, you know, it you got to have a rapport with if you're if you're an artist you have to have a rapport with your with your audience you know otherwise if you don't hold their attention there won't be no audience yeah, yeah. And do you know about street art like graffiti or something uh, yeah um, like bank banksky everybody knows yeah. um, there's this guy that I like um, I don't know his name but um, You know Space Invaders? The old, there's this old game on Atari called Space Invaders. And oh, they yes, like yes, little yes. aliens and you had to shoot them. Um, with tiles, he um, has these square tiles and then he makes these um, the aliens that come down. Yeah. Um, I love street art. Uh, Shoreditch is one of the best places. Mm -hmm. um, even uh, in Waterloo as well, uh, they got this, um, like, it's just a tunnel with a road. What was um, the the first name of the the place? Uh, the, Shoreditch. Yeah. What, yeah, what Shore, is it about? Shoreditch, Shoreditch, Old Street. It's um, it's a very, very trendy area. Hmm. Like people always have mustaches oh, and good. they're always riding yeah. fixie bikes. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of recording studios around there. Like you've got the Fortress. So it's it's one of them places where creative people mm -hmm. always are. So there's a lot of good graffiti, there's yeah. a lot of good street art. Um, there's some funny ones as well. You always see some odd ones around the area. Um, Waterloo, they've got this tunnel and uh, you can spray paint there. Yeah. It doesn't matter, like even if the police walk by, they can't do nothing oh, because right. it's made for spray paints. Because they're, they want to, uh, to open some Uh, restaurants instead of the place and yeah what I, they want to do they want to take take away the uh, skate park yeah. and move it yeah, they don't exactly. they don't necessarily want to move it far it's yeah. like 200 meters okay. away but everybody is just like no because um, south bank was the first ever like skate park kind of thing yeah. it wasn't even a skate park it was yeah. just that's how it was and skaters went there because they could do tricks And it's, it's an iconic, it's an iconic place in London. That's why nobody wants to get rid of it. Yeah. But now we we we, we are talking about the um, street art. But do you think it's possible to um, spread our how can I say our art like this or like a kind of trying to 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 do art in this way? without being necessarily that kind of style like uh, graffiti for um, example you, I can't do graffiti anymore. you don't necessarily have to yeah. do graffiti um, in uh, Manhattan in Manhattan Park yeah. um, there was this tree and somebody put this tiny tiny little door at the bottom of the tree yeah. like it, the roots like grew so the door just went in and he screwed it in like this that was simple but it was very very it was a very good idea and uh, people were put it by opening the door and there's a little hole inside so you can put like notes in there and things like that which you know the street art is just des just generally um, free art what people can see and basically on the street it doesn't necessarily have to be graffiti yeah. uh, one, one that I see in Shoreditch this is in Shoreditch again it's just a bike But it's wrapped up in um, wrapped up in like present wrapping paper. Yeah, the whole bike is wrapped up in wrapping paper. So you can see that it's all wrapped up. It's still chained up, and then it's got a note on it. I didn't read the note, but yeah, there was a few of them, a few of them around, and um, they started doing this um, public pianos. Uh, I know that there was one in Bank somewhere, and South Bank there was one. Uh, in King's Cross Station or St Pancreas Station, they got them there now. And people, just normal people, they sit down and they start playing. You know, that's also street art in a way. Yeah, yeah. What do you think the relationship between audience and artists, the communication should be? What, between uh, the public and street artists? Yeah, and street artists. Uh, with street art, um, the good thing about street art is the... Um, Well, people don't know who does it. Yeah. That's the thing. Like Banksy, everybody knows Banksy, but I still don't know what he looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, I could be talking to him, and I would never know. Uh, 
Um, so the whole the whole idea of like not knowing because you know street art could be illegal if you spray paint somewhere that you're not meant to is illegal. So you don't necessarily want people knowing that you it's your artwork. But yeah. Banksy got the fame because you know you carry on going, you carry on going. People take pictures. Yeah, then people yeah. Spray I up. would like to involve somebody in the street. What do you think is the best way to do it? So what to, to involve? Yeah, involve to to talk with somebody random or at random and to, to ask what, what do they think about it or uh, just strike up a conversation anyway. So. Uh, one one that my friend done. Um, like we we uh, we had um, like a media project where we had to interview people. And we had trouble trying to stop the public because we was just meant to interview on the street. Yeah. Um, so we had a lot of trouble trying to get the public to actually stand there for five minutes and talk to us. So my friend, he got um, some cardboard and it was uh, free chats. Oh, good. Yeah, just the free, free chats. And yeah, we, we ended up having a few people come up because it was, it was something different, something high catch. And was it with recording? Oh. Yeah, it was uh, visual and audio. Oh, okay. So we had a camera and a separate mic. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's how we done that. Um, the only other thing is going to like somewhere with a lot of, a lot of people, like Oxford Street or South Bank, or um, somewhere where people were not necessarily rushing to somewhere, not going to work, like in a pub. It's the perfect place because you can talk to somebody and, you know, if they want an interview, you just sit there and then do the interview and it's usually quiet. Um, what do you think uh, <clears throat> is the best way to do if I want to create or, like, in the street, is it like this, for example, I did outside. Yeah. But it, it wasn't actually in, in the streets, it was in the park. Okay. So do you think it's better if I meet people in the park or in the streets, which is the difference? Um, with this kind of thing, um, parks would be a bit out of the way. I think on the street would be better. Yeah. Um, the best way to, like if you have artwork like this and you're looking to sell, the best idea is to get a cheap store at a market somewhere. Uh, just for one day and see see how it goes, see if people like it. Um, the other ways is um, obviously the internet, but then there's no face to face. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go on the like down the stall room, or um, a lot of people do it in central London, or they used to, where they just put down a piece of cloth and then they just put it down and try and sell, it, including on South Bank as well. But if the police come. Yeah. It's a little bit of trouble. I think the yes, the problem on the internet is just the glass. Double glass is the glass of the camera and the glass of the computer. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the only thing. In the meter is nothing. Yeah, I'll catch you in a bit, rubber. Today the topic is about the war oh. and. Um, my question is why the children are playing with the little soldiers and they find the war so, how can I say, so enjoyable because they can play and why is it so terrible? Um, well, the reason why kids play with army toys yeah. um, in a way is because when you're a kid um, you know, you want to be an astronaut, you want to be a fireman, you want to be a police officer, yeah. you want to be in the army. Um, it's, it's one of the first jobs that you learn about when you're a kid. So, I'm guessing um, it's just to play out their fantasies. Um, I don't think it's right. Um, it's like Lego. They don't do um, any, um, any guns or anything like that in Lego, except for Star Wars. But no, that's different. Uh, Star Wars Lego. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing either, because toys are toys, as long as the kids grow up and they realise in their head that, you know, war actually kills people. Because yeah. when you're a kid, you don't realise. But why there is this uh, kind of... Uh, element inside the 
the, the game, why there is... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to understand why there is this uh, idea of war in the in a game. Um, well, since, since the start of time, um, the first ever game that was created was war. Um, war is always over religion or land. Um, it's never for a good reason. Yeah. at the end of the day. Because I think sometimes, after all, in the war there is some kind of competition as well. Yeah. So it's not totally about business, money, or looting, or yeah, terrible always. things, but somehow the human being has to have a kind of confrontation. Yeah, you're right. Um, like the Second World War, um, yeah. Hitler was a postman um, in the trenches. And then when the war was over, yeah. um, because he got to know some higher up people, we started to get higher up. And the whole reason why the Second World War started was because um, the English Navy was the best Navy around. And um, Hitler was jealous and he wanted to make more boats. But obviously because of the World War I, uh, everybody said no to him. And that's why the Second World War kicked off. Because he wanted, to, he wanted a, as good a Navy as Great Britain. And it was just a competition. Do you remember some particular um, uh, story from the Second World War? Um, well, not really. About England, for example. Um, what, and their, their view on the war? Um, oh, man. Too long ago. I, my history classes were too long yeah, ago. Yeah, we are too young. Well, something that somebody told you or do you know um, uh, well Hitler um, he almost got assassinated mm -hmm. uh, but it was a failed assassination attempt because they put a bomb underneath a table for a meeting and uh, he was meant to sit at the head of the table meaning that the bomb would have gone straight to him but he sat at the corner so the table leg actually saved his life oh really yeah. interesting um, have you ever had some experience like when you when you were a kid about war or...? Um, well, when I was a kid, it's only wars in like Afghanistan and Iraq that people really remember. Um, but of course there was Vietnam, uh, which was a useless war to fight anyway. Um, the Americans lost so many men for no apparent reason. Um, I suppose... I suppose war... war Back in the day when it was actually war, it was medieval times and before. Like the Romans, uh, the Mongolians, Genghis Khan, for example. Uh, the wars between Mongolia and China, that went on for centuries. Oh, really interesting. And what about... No, 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 continue, is it? What about the game time? Um, if you preferred use the guns or, I don't know, something else, or like helicopter? Or... Yeah, um, myself, I'll be, I'll be a gunman. Gunman? Yeah, definitely. definitely, on the front line, running around. So, no women were allowed in, in, in your game? Please, or, or maybe you did something like man against women? Um, well, in computer, in computer terms, yeah, I've played against girls before and things like that, but um, fight, actually fighting the war, um, Women are not really on the front line, they're more on the back line, um, looking after yeah, other things, of course so. I believe. Um, but yeah, there are women on the front line now, um, in Afghanistan and Iraq, but yeah, before it never used to happen, it was men only. Yeah, I was thinking about the kind of behaviour that there is always, even if it's just a game play with children, there is a kind of behavior of um, uh, a team against another one. Yeah, what, so there is competition. Yeah, what I heard is that lots and lots of like the drone planes and a lot of things that are manned, so they're just computerized, they run off of um, Xbox control pads and PlayStation control pads because it's the young people now that are generating a new technology for these weapons. Yeah. And obviously it's the easiest way to control anything. Yeah, technology run incredible uh, speed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I remember when I was a kid, there was nothing like iPads or yeah, it, it computers. Was, or it what was the was Spectrum the... and the Atari and the, the Nintendo 64. Yeah. It's like the Mark, Mark II, the first ever computer, um, and all it could do was play uh, noughts and crosses. Um, yeah, that was the size of this pub. Just a computer to play tic-tac-toe with a human. It was crazy. But yeah, technology's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, do you remember when we used to have the um, water guns? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, water, water fights were big. Water guns, water bombs. Oh yes, with balloons full of water. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. That's amazing. I'm still doing, if, if I can. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I want to do it again. Yeah, it's fun. Remember the childhood, like... Uh... <laughs> but yeah, it was always running around the garden. We had water fighting. Like, that's the thing, back in... Before there were computers and things like that, you had to make your own entertainment. Like, board games and card games, that was the number one. Yeah. You know, back in, just after the Second World War, people used to sit around and listen to the radio as a family. Yeah. As entertainment. Because that was the best of technology that they had. So now, what do you think about peace inside uh, this kind of context? Because the, there is a competition, so we, we said there is this kind of competition, but now what do you think about peace inside this kind of competition? Well, that, that's why we got the UN. That's why we got the United Nations, because uh, they're meant to be keeping peace around the globe. Um, although sometimes they get their noses into a situation which they can't handle, um, sometimes, well, most of the time it does good. Although if you think about it, um, like it, United Kingdom is a world power, um, China and America, we're nothing compared to the UN, because the UN is telling everybody what to do. So, you know, who's the bigger bosses and who's the one that actually wants war? Yeah. Because the UN, you have to watch them. Do you support the monarchy? The monarchy? Um, I, I don't believe that I'm a big supporter of the monarchy, but I'm happy that we've got a, a Queen of England and we're going to have a King and Queen of England in the future. Um, it's, it's a part of my heritage, um, yeah. so I don't, I don't want that to die. So you're and somehow you're proud of it? Yeah, yes. yeah I'm proud of, proud of it, but uh, considering that most of the royal family are German, uh, my Queen Victoria is actually German. She had a name changed when she got married. And yeah, so the war's still going on. Really? Yeah, 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 no, no. It's just going on in a different way. What about rich people? Rich people? Yeah. Um, what, rich people and war? Um, well, it's the rich people that create the wars. It's the rich people that want something. It's the rich people that are greedy. It's the poor people that need to fight. And they need to fight. Yeah, the, uh, the poor people are just pawns to them in the chess game. They're nothing. So, do you think this um, emotion, like competition, is could be? more inside rich people or poor people? Sorry, repeat the question. Like, do you think this kind of uh, emotional competition, this kind of feeling? Um, be more in the rich. More in the rich. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can be naturally competitive, but um, rich people tend to want stuff more. That's why they're rich. Yeah. Yeah, if they want something they want, they will go out and get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a mentality because you still have rich people that are nice people. Yeah. You know, it's, it, you, can't, you can't say that everybody's bad that earns over a million pounds a year. Yeah, no, they're not. But this is just to have a comparison. Yeah. Nothing more. Yeah. Nothing yeah. more. Okay, we did 10 minutes. Like, Always, okay, like cool. usually. Okay, All right. good. Catch you in a bit. Catch you in a bit. <laughs>
June, uh, June 24th, I think. Mm. Or oh, something like that. 25. Yeah, 25. Yes. 25. I know so it's a Wednesday. Wednesday, about subliminal messages. Right. What do you think about this? the idea of subliminal messages? Um, they'll be one second. Oh, no one second. Got to lock the door. Oh, We're done for the next one. Spain, you're not thinking. We were talking about the subliminal messages. Just subliminal messaging. Um, subliminal messaging. Um, well, they used to use it um, back in the day, um, like product placement kind of thing was uh, subliminal messaging. Um, they also say that there's subliminal messaging in songs and things like that. Um, Disney were very good at subliminal messaging because in all of their films, all of their um, uh, cartoons, there is subliminal messaging in there. Um, the Lion King, um, there's lots of them. Just go on the internet, check it out, it's yeah, pretty good. So, do you think it's uh, much more towards the children, this kind of idea? Um, no, not necessarily. It's more towards the adults, I would, I would think. Um, although subliminal messaging on children would work a lot better, um, Adults tend to be able to withhold themselves from. If they, if they see a Coca Cola, then they can say no to it, you know? The kid wants it. Yeah, now uh, I saw that subliminal messages are divided in different topics like religion, um, sex, yeah. and food, and whatever. Okay. So, what do you think is the most dangerous subliminal um, messages? Most dangerous, probably food. Food? Yeah. Because it is something we need every day. Yeah, and well, that or religion. It depends what kind of subliminal messaging you're actually talking about, because there is good and negative. Most of the time, it's just so people can buy something. Yeah, because I remember it was in a special cartoon, and the background was with a, a window with a naked woman. With okay. Face, you know, and it was for chicken. Okay. So now. What do you think is the, uh, how do you say, the most important subliminal message for, if it's positive in a way, it is something positive in a subliminal message, or it's all negative? Um, it depends. It depends, because you have adverts these days and it is subliminal messaging to make you eat healthier. It is there. Um, it just depends who who's actually making these subliminal messages and what they're actually in because if they're in films or advertisements it, it depends it depends and who is the most interesting person who can get the, the advantage uh, probably the government um, any kind of organization that would want people to know about their product or their services or what they do so yeah, anybody really. Yes. It would benefit most people. I was thinking about the sex because, after all, the sex is something should be beautiful and amazing. What is the, the problem with the, with the sex in its own um, it, Well, it depends on what we're going to go. Um, if you say, well, if there's kids involved, then it's not very good at all. Um, adults. It depends on what type of subliminal message. If it's looking sexy, like lingerie and um, like that kind of thing, then yeah, it's got to be subliminal. People see it every day. Because there is a picture, for example. I'm not going to say the brand of fast food, but it's with uh, sex, uh, sex, food and um, a glass of drink and chips. Okay, that's probably McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm going to cut it because we don't have to say it too much advertising. Oh uh, yeah, it's free. Because it's free and it's yeah. free. we don't get money for this. No, but it, it depends like um, also on the bottom of, you know, innocent smoothies? Yes. And before, if you looked at the bottom, it would say something funny. And one of the ones that I remember was, um, stop looking at my bottom, which was linked up with sex as well, but, you know. Yeah, but what do you think is the, the last step of this? So if I see something like that, and I want to have sex, what is the problem? It is, it's, not, it's not about... Um, you're, you're, what they're trying to do is associate sex with the product. Mm -hmm. 
that's all what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the product sexy. So if, say for example, it was McDonald's and on the cup it did say sex, then people would naturally think, okay, I want to go to McDonald's because it's a sexy place, you know, there's going to be sexy girls there or whatever. Yeah, it's the link to sex that makes them sell the product. Yeah, and for being also um, really have sex to have children and going on with uh, and do say forty uh, foot you know but I uh, want to have children. Yeah. And then continue to, to to pay to increase the uh, do say development or payment to family mm -hmm. so more uh, customers. Oh okay. Um well yeah like like if you if you supported a football team yeah, your your kids are more likely to support that football team. Yeah. You know, if you'd like, like drinking Pepsi instead of Coke, your kids will generally drink Pepsi instead of Coke until they get to an age where the advertisements and the uh, subliminal messaging as well starts actually working in their brain a bit better. Yeah, and maybe the now I did just images to show to explain these images really brief, like one second. Yeah. But I think it's not all. I mean, subliminal messages sometimes is the problem. Something hidden, like yeah, shape. yeah. It's yeah. like a Coca Cola. They had um, yeah, their uh, profile bottles, their glass bottles. They spent a lot of money designing that because the bottle they wanted to look like a woman's back. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Have you seen something else? Um, that, that's just off the top of my head. Much better. Much yeah. better. Maybe, maybe you saw something and you don't remember because it was subliminal. Yeah, it's subliminal. <laughs> of course. Okay, so I think it's a minutes. Say. It doesn't matter, six minutes, it's five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Six good minutes, and the video before this. Yeah. Stop. Uh, catch a bit, probably. Catch a bit. Huh. Stop. I think it's a skiffy.